period. Ping Mei. This time. So it's that time of year again. COVID is getting uh, pretty bad, so we're halting classes for now. Uh, so I figured I'd probably be best spending my time uh, working on more lessons. So um, you can expect these uh, every so often. I'll do the same thing I did during the summer. Um, once I've seen that somebody actually watched the video, um, that's when I'll do another. Um, and hopefully it'll be helpful to you guys. Um, and hopefully we can come back to meeting in person as soon as possible. So you can use these lessons um, as instruction, um, as a demonstration of the techniques. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, remember to uh, ask them. Just because we're not meeting in person anymore uh, doesn't mean that I can't still answer your questions. So uh, send any questions in that you have. Um, and without anything else, let's get started. Let's begin with our stretches. Our warm up. We're ready. Ten jumping jacks. Ready. Begin. Ana, do, sat, na, das, yas, yoga, you do. I hope you. Turn your head left and right. Now side to side. Circle your arms. Remember big circles. So you're rotating at your shoulder. And reverse. Rotate your shoulders. And reverse. Turn your shoulders side to side. And bring your arms up, turn all the way around your waist. center, rotate your hips, remember big circles but keeping your head still, and reverse, now stretching to one side, remember to reach over you, have your palm face up, that'll help you get a little bit more stretch. Really reach as far as you can. Feel the stretch all along your side. Switch. Switch again. And switch one more time. Back to the center. This time, bring your feet two shoulder widths apart. And down and up. Ready, begin. Hana, do, set, net. Pushing on your back. Hana, do, set, net. Hana. Do, set, net, Anna. Do, set, net, Anna. Do, set, and stop. Go down, holding your ankles, keeping your legs straight. And go to one side.
switch. And back to the center. One side. And switch. Now come back up. This is one of the wonderful things about living in a neighborhood with dogs. As soon as one starts barking, they all do. So let's have your feet one shoulder width apart, toes facing forward. So each time, you come down, down as far as you can. Remember, you want your leg parallel to the ground. You don't just want to be leaning over, you want to be bringing your entire body down. And this is um, an important skill. It's a self-defense technique, um, as well as an exercise. So. Ready? Begin. Hana! Duel! Set! Net! Yasa Yuka You do And you. Okay. Now give yourself a quick break. We're going to go down for the long count. So when you're doing this at home, uh, you can do the exercise the way we're doing it. Um, and I recommend you uh, do practice that. In addition, if you want to, you can uh, practice doing it fast. So one, two. Uh, you can also simply practice your sitting stance like this. Um, it's a good way to stand. Uh, maybe you're watching TV, brushing your teeth. Um, anything you can do to sneak in a little bit of practice here and there. Um, and that'll all add up in the end. So, feet one shoulder width apart. Coming down for the long count. Ready, come down. And hold it here. Ready, Hana. Do Sa Ne Dasa Yasa Yoga You do Aho Yo Yohana You do You set You net You dasa You yasa You ilga You you do Yo aho Simu Back up, take out your legs, and now let's go down for push ups. So, push ups are one of those things where the more you practice, the better it'll get for you. Um, if you don't practice uh, the push ups throughout the whole winter break, I guess you could call it, um, when you come back, you won't be able to do nearly as many. Uh, I found that out the hard way over the summer. I didn't practice as much, and I lost a lot of my push ups. So I want you guys to uh, practice push-ups um, just as frequently as you used to, uh, maybe even more frequently. Um, and that way, when we come back, uh, we won't have uh, lost any progress, and maybe we'll even have gained a little bit. So, you can push-ups. Ready? Hana, do.
Sve. Ne. Jaso. Jaso. You got. You do. I hope. Yo. Johanna. You do. You set. You net. You got so. You yaso. You will go. You you do. You I hope. Two more. I'm giving yourself a quick break. That'll help you do even more this next time. Um, and at home, you don't have to stop at 30. Uh, you can keep going. Uh, wait a few minutes and then get back to it. Um, and the more you practice, the better off you'll be. Ready? Ten more. Ready? Hana. Do. Set. Met. Yasu. Yasu. Uga. You do. I hope. You. Come back into butterfly position. So feet together. Bouncing your knees. Now come down and forward. So bring your knees close to your body. Bring your body forward. Eventually you want to try to touch the ground with your chin. That's the end goal. So that means keeping your back straight. Coming down. And pushing your knees down toward the ground as well. someone around who can help you with this. Um, if we were in class, Mr. Rooley would be coming around pushing everyone's knees down toward the ground. Um, but unfortunately, he can't be at everyone's house while they're practicing. So uh, maybe ask a parent or a sibling uh, to help you out with that. Pushing your knees down toward the ground slowly. Bouncing your knees again. Remember, uh, we're not just doing this for fun. Uh, we're doing the bouncing to bring our legs closer and closer down to the ground, uh, just help you uh, stretch your legs out. And now come down and forward again. So really push yourself during these stretches. Uh, it's easy to just uh, do the routine, go through all the motions, uh, and stop where you're comfortable, but try to go just a little bit more every time. Uh, like Mr. Fong was saying the other day, uh, if you can do just an eighth of an inch uh, more every week, a quarter of an inch more every week, um, that all adds up quickly over time. So if you're stretching, you're always aiming to improve. with both hands. So remember to keep your leg straight while you're doing this. Your leg is not bent. Reaching with both hands. So you should be able to feel the stretch on the underside of the leg. And uh, once again, we're always aiming to go more and more with our stretches. So if this is too easy for you, make sure you can feel that stretch. You can lift up your leg as you stretch. That's one way to get a little bit more. And bring one leg over and push yourself in the opposite direction. You're stretching your back on this one, so do it slowly. Now switch. Reaching with your leg again. Other one over and stretch. Okay. Now bring your feet apart, coming down toward the center. So you want to start to stretch out with your legs as far apart as you can go. Once again, this is a part that Mr. Rooley likes to help out with. He'll 
move your leg out a little bit farther. Help you um, push yourself a little more. But once again, uh, he's not here right now, so um, things you can do, you can do this uh, maybe in a hallway or against the furniture. Have one thing holding your leg here, other thing holding your leg here. Pull yourself forward. It'll help you bring your legs apart. Uh, when we do the splits, we use gravity to help us. But when you're like this, you can push yourself like that. Um, otherwise, um, just do your very best to move your leg over. Uh, ask somebody to help you, anything like that. So, ready? Let's come down over five long counts. Each time you breathe out. Ready? Hana! Do. Set. Net. Dasa. So, come down as far as you can now. Once again, it is good to have something to pull yourself with for this stretch. Um, I'm using the grass right now. Um, but that helps you get just a little bit farther down, helps you stretch yourself. Okay, and reach to one side. Again, you're reaching with both hands, try to push yourself, you should feel stretch under your leg and on your side. And switch. Now back to the center. So ready? Come down. This time, you can do it over 20 counts. Ready? Hana. Do. Set. Nut. Dasu. Yasu. Yuga. Yidu. Aho. Yo. 10 more counts. This is a good time to adjust your stance. Bring your leg up farther if you can. Maybe turn your body so that you can come down farther. Yohana, you'll do, you'll set, you'll net, you'll dasa, you'll yasa, you'll ilga, you'll yudu, you'll ahop, sumo. So come down any farther if you can, otherwise hold it here. So you should not be comfortable doing the stretch, you should be just a little bit out of your comfort zone. A little bit farther than last time, a little bit farther than uh, feels fine. You should feel the stretch in your legs. Feel the stretch as you're coming down. Now let's hold it here for 10 more counts. Ana, do, set, net, dasu, yasu, yuga, yudu, aho, yo. Come back up slowly. Now stand up. If your legs feel a little bit sore, that's a good thing. And now let's work on our splits. So start to lower yourself. Lower yourself slowly and catch yourself when you're low enough. So just hold yourself in that split for a little while. Um, it's best to do it a little bit longer. Uh, don't just come down and then come back up again. You want to hold it. So once again, do this while you're doing something else during a commercial break on TV. Um, maybe uh, you're watching a video on your phone. You can just uh, watch it in a split. So uh, just try to be creative when you do your stretches. Now let's turn to one side. Now we're in a front stretch. Right leg forward. 
or maybe you don't have your right leg forward since I'm doing uh, your mirror image, but um, I just have one foot out in front of you, so the body should be facing forward like this. The legs are facing forward, so if what we did with our middle split and the side kick, this is more of a front kick. Now turn to the other side. a week is just the baseline for what we do. Um, it's kind of hard to make any progress when you only do it once a week, so try to stretch a little bit more at home, especially during this time. Um, during winter break you might not have as much going on, so more time to stretch. Let's come back up. Cheerio. Turn around and fix the new forearm. Back around. Cheerio. Kyung Mei. Feel so. All right. Now let's work on uh, some block and punch combinations. So what we're going to do is uh, just pull out a few of the simplest blocks that we know: the low block, the high block, and the side block. And we're going to practice those with the reverse punch. So just to help you remember, the reverse punch is with the back hand. So this is regular punch and this would be the reverse punch. So we're using the back hand. If I have my right leg forward, I'm using my left arm. So let's do this uh, in a combination. So um, I'm going to let you decide uh, whether you want to uh, do this coming forward um, or if you just want to do it in place. Uh, if you have enough space to do it coming forward, uh, you can try that. It's good practice for uh, walking forward. Um, but naturally, if you have limited space, uh, like I do right now, uh, you might just want to do it in place. So, how about we have our left foot back? So, I'm going to do a block punch. So, I step forward, block, punch, and now I'm going to move back. Now I have my right leg back. So, block with my right, punch with my left. So, uh, each time, alternate. Um, so you're doing block with the one arm, punch with the other arm. So uh, let's practice this a few times. Remember on your low block, you're keeping a good solid walking stance. So your feet are fairly far apart. Your stance is deep enough. You've got your front leg bent, back leg straight. And when you block, you're bringing your arm to rest pretty much above your leg. So maybe about six to eight inches of space uh, there. So don't let your arm flop down. Um, try to hold it out a little bit longer. Um, if I, if we do in class, uh, have it so that you're holding this position for um, a little bit longer over time. Um, it's only extra exercise, uh, keeping your arm up. Uh, there are strength exercises. You just hold your arm out to your side for as long as you can. Um, after a little while, you realize that it's fairly difficult. Um, but being able to hold your arm out in a punch or a block, um, that's exercising those same muscles. So when you block, I want it to be a strong block too. Uh, I don't know if you can hear the snap in my uniform. So it's a good strong block. We got a good elbow strike, settling into a strong walking stance. And if anything is coming toward you, you're sweeping it away. So let's practice our uh, low block. Uh, reverse punch. So left foot back. Ready? Hana. Do. Set. So we're doing low section block and middle section punch. So the punch is to the center of your body. Net. Dasa. Yasa. 
Iya kan? Gitu. Ahok. Yo. Oh, let's do that a few more times. So each time, uh, two solid techniques. So this is important in forms too. Uh, you don't just want to slur the two movements together. So that would look like something like this. So you notice I didn't really uh, go through with my block. It's not a strong technique. Um, and if you uh, blinked, you might have missed it. Um, it kind of just went back to its place on my hip uh, way too fast. So just like in the forums, you want strong, defined techniques. So in this case, so strong block, strong punch. So uh, make them both crisp and strong. If it's a block, it's blocking a leg out of the way. Um, it's not just touching the leg, it's a uh, full solid block. So let's do this a few more times. Ready? Hana! Duel! Set! Ne! Yasu! And Yasu! Hey! Haro! So now let's work on the same thing but with the rising block. So remember on your rising block, you're coming up high. So uh, every time we block, um, there's so much that the name uh, doesn't really give. We call this the rising block or the up block or the high block. Um, and from the name you can infer your arm is coming up and you're blocking high. Uh, but it doesn't really give you anything other than that. So it is important to come up, but you also want to be doing an across motion. Uh, you notice in the low block, we don't just come straight down. We come down and across. In the high block, it's up and across. Uh, this is because if someone's uh, striking down on you uh, with an arm, with a bat, uh, with a pole, uh, you don't just want to take the full force of it. Um, because first of all, it might still pass through and hit you. And second, your arm is going to hurt a lot from taking all that force. So you want to sweep it aside, that way you're less taking less of a hit. Um, and you're also guaranteeing that even if it does make it through your block, it's not going to hit you. So up into the side. And you also want to think about this block coming out. So I'm not just bringing it straight up near my head. Um, that's another way to uh, have it come through your block and hit you. You want to come out. So the reason uh, for that is if someone's going to hit you with um, a spinning kick, uh, hit you with a stick, if you uh, block it near their hand or block it near their body, um, what we do with the spinning kick is we come in and block near the body um, because you take a lot less force when it's close to the point of rotation. But when you're taking the very end of it, that's when it's really painful. So uh, what you want to do is come in close. Uh, if you can block, if someone's hitting you from above, if you can block on their lower arm, or if they're swinging something at you, block on their hand, that's the ideal. So it means that you're taking a lot less force. So remember, you're blocking up, you're blocking across, and you're blocking out. So if we really wanted a good name for this block, we would call it the rising, sweeping, outward block. Um, but of course, that's a bit of a mouthful, so uh, we just call it the high block. So let's practice high block, reverse punch a few times. So left foot back. Ready, Hana. Duel. Set. Net. Yasu. Yasu. Yuga. Vidu. Aho. 
Yo. Hey. Now, Taro. So now we're going to uh, go back, um, and now we're going to work on our side block. So side block is different from these blocks. Uh, the blocks that we've been doing are on walking stance, and side block we do on L stance. This is also called inner forearm middle section block, um, and it's to the side. So we could do it in front of us, but the side block is coming to the side. So this is the most common block that we do to the side, especially in the forms. So we can just get away with calling it side block, but it's a side middle sec or it's a side middle section inner forearm block. So when we're doing this, we're in L stance. Most of the weights on the back leg. We lift up this front leg if we need to. One. And for our second technique, we're going to shift into a walking stance. That means moving our front leg over a little bit. So like this. So we're coming over and sinking into a good walking stance. So from the front. Watch my foot. So I'm coming over and into a walking stance. So let's practice this technique a few times. So L stance, walking stance, uh, side block, reverse punch. So ready? How about we have our uh, right foot back this time. So we're going to step forward and punch. So ready? Hana! So now with the left foot, duel. Hana. Duel. Okay. So that was four. Now five. Yasa. Yasa. Yuga. You do. I hope. Yo. Hey. And Taro. So, this one. So on this technique, um, it can be a little bit difficult on the side techniques to do that elbow strike. Uh, this will come up when you're doing knife hand strike side block. Uh, you notice when I do that, my elbow is kind of pointing out this way. You still want it straight behind you. So when we're doing our elbow strike, straight behind us. If someone's coming up behind you, you're hitting them. So when we're doing side block, we don't want this, we want this. So you have to really put a lot of force into that elbow strike. So. Uh, if you have any questions on that stuff, uh, just remember to ask. You can use the comments, uh, or you can email me. Uh, but let me know if you have any questions. How about we work on some kicks now? So what we're going to warm up with is front kick and side kick. Uh, so for front kick, uh, if you want, you can get a little bit of extra stretching in by doing rising front stretch. Um, or you can do the side rising stretch. Um, the side rising stretch is best when you have something to hold on to, uh, a chair, a wall, a railing, something like that. But both of these kicks look almost like the kick that they represent, um, but there's no knee lift and there's no snap. It's just bringing the kick straight up and down. So you can practice those if you want to, but I'm not going to get into those right now. So let's get into our kicks now. Um, when you practice at home, uh, depending on your surface, uh, it's a good idea to practice barefoot. Um, if you have carpet or uh, hardwood, uh, that's a good idea. Um, I assume most of you won't be using uh, your shoes indoors, um, although if you have a space for that, you can. If you're practicing outside, um, even though the weather is probably not going to be uh, suitable for that uh, for a while, um, you can use your shoes, uh, go barefoot, use a mat, something like that. Uh, don't use socks if you're on a slippery surface. Um, I'm using socks right now because I realized a second ago that I couldn't feel my feet. Um, it's pretty cold outside. 
Uh, but whatever you do, uh, just use the right footwear. In class, we normally practice barefoot, so if you want to do that, uh, that's a good idea. So let's work on our kicks now. We're just going to do front kick and turning side kick, and that'll help us prepare for the next kicks that we're doing. So front kick, I want you to do the stationary. Use the same leg over and over again. So let's have left foot back. So I'm doing your mirror image. So front kick, remember, you're kicking out in front of you, kicking with the ball of your foot, and your movement is coming forward. So big lift on the knee, good snap, and don't forget the recoil. So it's coming back before you set it down. So let's do 10 front kicks. Ready, Hana. Do. Set. Net. Dasa. Yasa. Yuga. You do. Aho. Yo. And switch. So now with the right foot. Ready, Hana. Do. Z. Net. Dasa. Yasa. Yoga. You do. I hope. Yo. Hey. Switch again. So now we're going to do side kicks. Uh, before we get into that. Um, you might have noticed uh, I did have my hands up, but they weren't necessarily in fists. Um, that's because uh, when you're fighting, you might not always have it in fists. Uh, you might do open hand fighting. Um, that's one way uh, to do it, one style. So uh, you don't have to do that, um, and you don't have to have your hands in fists. The important thing is to have your hands up and ready to block. So that brings up a point that I want to mention, which is right now, uh, when you're not in class, is an excellent time to be creative with your training. Uh, so by creative, I mean uh, think of your own lesson plans, uh, think of new ways to use techniques. Um, if something works, uh, try it out. Um, that doesn't just say uh, just a bunch of bunch of stuff together um, that you don't think will work, um, but it's fun to do them in all in order. Uh, think of stuff that's uh, practical, um, interesting, uh, what looks good, um, or what would be good in fighting. Uh, so it's a good time to be creative. Think of your own combinations, stuff like that. Um, you guys have all had enough training to uh, have a good idea of what might be practical, uh, what might work well together um, in combinations. Uh, so uh, think of your own ways to do that. Uh, since we're doing this uh, online for the moment, it means that the teacher isn't around, uh, the teacher isn't telling you what to do. Uh, I hope that you guys are using these lessons to your advantage, um, but if you don't watch them, there isn't really anything I can do about that. So uh, I recommend that you use these, but when you're practicing on your own, uh, without guidance, uh, be creative, think of your own ways to do things. So let's continue. Now we're going to do turning sidekick. So turning sidekick, move around, and snap your foot out using the side of your heel. So you cross your leg, cross your body, and snap. So let's do the same thing. Um, so we're going to do it with the same leg each time until we switch. It's so ready, Hana. Do. Set. Net. Dasa. Yasa. Ilga. Yudu. Aho. Yo. And switch. So, ten again. Ready? Hana. Do. Set. Net. Dasa. 
Ia să. Ilka. You do. Aho. Yo. Hey! Aparo. So what we're going to work on now is some reverse techniques. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is back kick. So uh, back kick is a blind kick. Uh, I equated it uh, earlier. We practiced front kick because it's straightforward. Back kick is straight backward. So what you do in back kick is you still lift up your knee and you extend it straight back. So kick. Okay. So what you're hitting with is the corner of your heel. Um, when I bring up my foot, that okay, kick, I extend it straight out. You don't want to add a hook to it. Uh, that's bad form. You want to kick it straight out and come back, just like a lot of our other kicks. So let's practice back kick a few times. Just lift and kick straight behind you. And we're going to do it um, a few times. So uh, how about 10 on each side? Uh, same leg until we switch. So this time, right leg first. And when we do this, you can bend a little bit. Try not to bend all the way. Don't fall over. Um, but bending a little bit forward uh, gives you the ability to kick a little bit higher behind you. You really need to bend if you want to uh, have a fairly high kick. So ready? Hana! And still keeping your hands up. Do. Set. Ne. Dasa. Yasa. Yuga. You do. Aho. Yo. Hey. So switch. So now we're doing the same thing with the other side. So uh, when we practice this kick, uh, it's good to have a target, um, but most of you probably don't have targets at home. Uh, I still don't have any targets at home, so uh, you'll probably just be practicing in the air for now. Um, maybe you can ask somebody uh, to hold a pillow. Just make sure that they're not too close. You don't want to kick them on accident. Have them hold it out in front of them. Um, and that might be a good way to do a target. Um, but if you don't have anybody to do it, uh, don't risk uh, breaking anything. Um, and just practice it in the air. So, let's practice with the other leg now. Ready? Hana! Do! Set! Ne! Dasa! Yasa! Yoga! You do. I hope. Yo. And Paro. So, I'm a little bit better on with this leg than this leg. Um, and that just means that I need to practice more on this side. Um, so, if you find yourself with the same thing, if for any kick or any technique you're better on one side than the other, that just means that you practice the other side just a little bit more. So if you have a side that you felt like you uh, weren't doing quite as well at, let's practice this again, just five more times. So if you're better on your left, practice on your right. If you're better on your right, practice on your left. So ready? Hana! Do! Su! Na! Dasa! Hey! And Paro! Good. So let's move on to turning or uh, reverse side kick now. So for reverse side kick, you uh, turn just like in the turning side kick, but you're turning to your back, turning to your blind side. So if I turn this way, I'm turning more toward my opponent. If I'm turning this way, I'm turning away. So I'm going to turn this way and away. And this is not a spinning kick. You want still a straight line motion, so when I kick, turn around, and then kick. So I'm not kicking as I turn around, I'm turning around, 
and kicking straight. So it's just like a regular side kick, but you're turning to your blind side first. So let's practice this one a few times. So, ready, Hana! So, uh, what you can do if you want is uh, just set the other foot down in front of you, take a quick step back and alternate. Duel! Set! Net! Dasa! Yasa! Yuga! You do! Aho! Yo! So make sure you're keeping your hands up while you do this kick. Uh, start out slow if you're not comfortable with it. On all of the trickier kicks, uh, you want to be careful not to fall. Uh, depending on what surface you're on, um, if you practice on concrete like we did in the garage, uh, you want to be extra cautious. If you're practicing like gra on grass like I am, um, it's probably not a big deal. But uh, start out slow and get used to it and speed up as you're more and more comfortable with it. So let's do that 10 more times. Ready? Anna! Do! Set! Net! Dasa! Yasa! Yuga! Yudu! Aho! Yo! And Paro! So once again, if you're having trouble on one side, just keep working on that side, work on it and work on it and work on it, take a quick break on it, and then work on it a little bit more. Um, try to keep working, working, and working until you're a little bit more comfortable with that side, and uh, practice that side a little bit more uh, each time you go over it. So, cheerio! Tune Now we're going to work on one more thing, which is boxing punches. Uh, so we're going to practice these on our fighting stance. So uh, this time, when we do our boxing punches, make sure that you're not just standing still. Um, in a lot of our stances, when we practice, maybe we're on sitting stance. One, two, one, two. We're still turning our waist. Uh, we're still putting our body into our techniques, but our feet aren't really moving. Um, even if they're rotating, they're not changing position. But this time when you're doing it, I want you to move your feet around. So when we're doing free sparring, what you want to do is keep your feet moving. You want to be up on the balls of your feet. You don't need to be all the way up like this, but just a little bit hovering off the ground it means you can move around a lot faster. So uh, be able to switch your feet, move around, uh, do whatever you need to do. In sparring, we do a lot of shuffling, so. So be able to shuffle, uh, have your uh, feet up on the balls of your feet. So when we do our punching, you can do a little step in and then withdraw. Uh, that's also good practice when we're sparring. We're probably not close enough for our opponent to hit us, uh, which is a good thing. You don't want your opponent to hit you, but you also need to be able to hit your opponent if we're doing something like point fighting uh, and you need to score points. So uh, what you do is you come in a little bit, now you're close enough to hit your opponent, then you come right back again. So that way you get the hits and your opponent doesn't get any hits on, on you. So let's just do a jab cross a few times, really focus on your stance. So ready, Hana, do, set, net, dasa. And you can alternate what your target is too. Uh, you don't just need to go straight forward, move around, act like your opponent is moving around. Yasa, yuga, you do, ahop. 
Yo, hi. Now switch. So when we switch, it needs to be nice and quick. It's not a big jump, um, but you want to come off the ground just a little bit and shuffle. Uh, you can see that I'm completely messing up my space over here. That's a good thing. It means that my feet aren't going very far from the ground. I'm just doing a quick shuffle. So um, if you put a blanket under your feet and uh, do the shuffle, uh, do the switch, uh, it should get twisted up a little bit. Just make sure not to trip yourself. So uh, let's do a couple more switches. So switch, 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 and switch. Okay, now doing our jab cross with the other side. Ready, Hana. Do. Set. Ne. Dasa. Yasa. Yoga. You do. I hope. Yo. Hey! So, Paro. So, feel slow. So, remember when you're fighting, you should be able to move around very fast. So, uh, try to make sure that you're mobile. You're on the balls of your feet. You're shuffling around, moving in and out. Um, if you move backwards, we haven't talked about this too much, but if you do need to step back, you step back with your back leg first because if you step back with your front leg now your stance is narrow, you have less balance um, and I don't really move very much when I do that uh, so if I really need to get my body out of the way I step back, that way my whole body moves backwards away from the danger and I still uh, have my balance I can move that front leg back afterwards so if you're stepping back step back first. If you want to step forwards, you can step forward first because that gets you in more and it helps you preserve your balance. So move in first and then follow with the back. So when we're coming back, back front. When we're moving forward, front back. So uh, that's just a little thing um, about movement. Um, there's also switching uh, and pivoting. When you pivot in Taekwondo, you get off the line. Someone's coming in straight at you with the kick, you get off the line. So, uh, sparring, uh, there's a whole lot of movement that goes on. Um, and if anything, uh, not only does it help you uh, move around, uh, be faster than your opponent, um, but it also might just mess with your opponent. Uh, if you're doing a switch every so often, um, your opponent doesn't know what side you're going to hit with. Um, if you're moving in on them fast, um, they might freeze up, they might uh, get scared. Um, so in sparring, you're not only uh, fighting physically, but you're fighting psychologically. So you want your opponent to think that they're going to lose, and if they think that they're going to lose, they're probably going to lose. So uh, think about that aspect of sparring, and a lot of it just comes down to the movement. So, cheerio! Kyungne! This up. All right. So now what we're going to do uh, is we're going to uh, take the technique techniques that we worked on and make them just a little bit more advanced. Uh, so if you're uh, one of the lower ranked students, I encourage you to try it out at least. Um, maybe uh, if it's something new and you just have completely no idea how to do it, uh, try it out a couple times uh, just to be safe. Uh, maybe figure it out by yourself. Um, but I'm not expecting you to learn any advanced kicks uh, without a teacher nearby. Um, but if you want to, you can try new things out. For the advanced students, I definitely want you to work on this with me. Um, just because it's important to work on the advanced stuff as well as the beginning stuff too. Uh, just to uh, make sure that you uh, stay good at Taekwondo over the break. So what we're going to work on first uh, is something that I think everybody should be able to try out. Uh, front kick, back kick. So uh, what we do, this is just a two kick combination. Um, Mr. Fong, uh, every once in a while, uh, likes to practice something that he calls four directional kicks. Uh, it's kicking in all four directions. Uh, there are lots of different ways to do it. Front kicks, side kicks, roundhouse kicks even, um, and back kicks are often a part of it. 
So what we're going to do is just a forward backward. So front kick, back kick, front kick, back kick. So let's practice that a few times, uh, just doing the combination. So ready? How about we have our right leg back first? So we're using our right leg for the front kick, our left leg for the back kick. So ready? Anna! And now we can set down our uh, left foot behind us. Now we're doing left foot for the front kick, right foot for the back kick. So switching every time. Duel! Set! Net! Dasa! Yasa! Yuga! You do. I hope. Yo. Hey. So that's our front kick, back kick combination. Uh, how about we try uh, something with your reverse side kick? So this time, let's do turning side kick, reverse side kick. So a two step combination coming forward. I'm going to have my left leg back first. So when I kick, one, and two. So it's important to know where you're placing your foot on this kick. Um, it all depends on the situation. So when you're doing, maybe in a fight, against somebody who's really experienced, uh, they're going to pick up on everything you do and use it to their advantage. Um, so if you uh, prepare for a technique before you actually do it, uh, they'll see that. That's called telegraphing. Um, and it makes it a lot easier to block your technique and counter um, and turn the fight against you. So if you're fighting someone experienced for your first kick, you set it down straight in front of you. That means that you have to do a little bit extra turn when you kick. Um, if you want to make it easier on yourself, you can set it down a little bit more uh, than directly in front of you. That means that you have less turn to do for your kick. Um, but if someone is experienced uh, that you're fighting, they might pick up on that, um, and that's um, probably not a good idea. So uh, what you want to do uh, is maybe at first when you're practicing, you can set it down a little bit more just to set you up for your next technique. Um, but eventually you also want to be able to set it down directly in front of you. So when we kick, one, two. So let's practice this kick a few times. So uh, two step combination. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back and forth because I find myself switching every time. So uh, you can do that too if you want. So ready, left foot back first. So left foot, right foot. Ready, Hana. Now I've got my right foot back, right foot, left foot. Duel. Set. Net. Dasa. Yasa. Ilga. You do. I hope. And yo. Hey! So coming back, you can also do this in a long chain coming forward. Uh, go down a room and then come back. You might find yourself getting a little bit dizzy when you do that and you need a bit more space. Um, but that's also a good way to practice this kick. So that's turning side kick, reverse side kick. So now what we're going to practice is turning side kick jumping reverse side kick. So jumping reverse side kick um, is a little bit tricky, but just like any tricky kick, you can get it down with practice. Um, for me, it's one of the kicks that I'm still not completely comfortable with, um, but I know that if I keep practicing it, the more and more we practice, the better we can get at it. So let's practice this in a two-step combination. 
So before we do that, uh, the jumping reverse side kick is almost the same as the reverse side kick, but there's a jump added to it. So I'm going to do the first kick. That was my jumping side kick. So now from here, I jump up with both legs and do the side kick uh, for the reverse side. So jump up and kick. Up and kick. Jump up and kick. So you can see I'm still not great at it, um, but I'm working on it. And I want you guys to start earlier than I did. Um, I feel like I never did this kick very often until um, I was a pretty high belt. So uh, I want you guys to start earlier than I did. And that way you have more time to get comfortable with it. Uh, when I was training, I learned a tornado kick uh, way before I really did this kick very often um, and I'm still much more comfortable with tornado kick than I am with jumping reverse side kick. Uh, so it's just a matter of a little bit the difficulty of the kick but also uh, when you're introduced to it. So hopefully if you guys get used to practicing this kick often uh, it won't be very much of a problem at all for you. So let's practice jumping reverse side kick in a two kick combination. So I put right foot back to start out. So ready, Hana. Two. Set. Net. Dasa. Yasu. Yuga. Uju. Aho. And yo. Hi. So. Haro. Chiria. And Kungne. Just sign. So that's jumping reverse side kick. Uh, I probably should have given this advice before uh, we did the kick, um, but start out slow. Uh, start out with a small jump, just a little jump to get you into it, and eventually uh, work on making the jump a little bit higher. So uh, for future practice, keep that in mind. Don't try to do, uh, go all the way through with it before you're ready for it. Um, now start out slow and eventually work your way up. So now let's work on uh, just a couple more kicks. So we're going to practice spinning kick. So uh, there are a few different ways to do spinning kick. Right now what we're going to do is spinning uh, heel kick or not spinning. Yeah, it is a heel kick. It is spinning. We call this spinning hook kick. So I'm going to do this. Come around. So uh, the important thing on this kick, you're hitting with the back of your heel and you're uh, hooking with your foot right before you kick. So your leg is not going to stay straight out as you kick. Your leg is going to hook. So a little fast striking motion. So when you add the hook in there, um, it means that it's a lot harder to block. Um, as I mentioned earlier, if you need to block a spinning wheel kick, uh, which is when you keep your leg out straight the whole time, all you really have to do is step in. Um, if you block the leg close to the body, um, the foot isn't really going to hurt you at all. But when we do uh, the kick with the hook, um, if someone steps in and blocks, they might still get a heel to their head, um, and that's not going to feel great. It also means that we can go a little bit faster if we have the leg closer to our body uh, for more of the time. So uh, that's why we do the spinning heel kick. Um, if you ever do one of these kicks in sparring, that's probably what you're going to end up doing. Um, just because it's uh, so much harder to block um, and it's a lot faster. So uh, you really don't want to do this against somebody who's uh, more experienced than you because they'll still take advantage of it. If they step back, they can come right back in after, and for a moment you're just 
standing there, not really able to do anything. So I wouldn't use this in flying too much, but if you have a really good setup with a combination for it, maybe you're doing something like front kick, side kick, spinning kick, um, that way your momentum is already going, you can come in faster, um, and do it before your opponent has time to react. But otherwise, you probably don't want to use this too much. But it's great practice, um, and it looks good. Um, if you can break a board with this, it's a little bit tricky, um, but it'll be super impressive, um, and it'll probably uh, be really fun at the promotion. So uh, this is a great kick to practice. It's one of the kicks in Taekwondo that is great to show off, um, and it's pretty fun to do once you have the hang of it. So uh, let's practice this kick a few times. Um, if you're one of the beginner students, uh, practice it slowly. Uh, if you're one of the advanced students, um, you have already been practicing it for a while. Uh, so start out slow the first couple times, but after that, build up your speed. Um, once again, this is a good kick to do with a target. Uh, you probably don't have a target at home, but if you have someone to hold out a pillow for you, um, that'll do uh, just fine as well. So remember on this kick, you want to spin around, so you look at your target before you even bring up your leg. Um, and that's called spotting, when you do a quick turn around like that. Um, it just means that you'll uh, get less dizzy, and you'll be able to lock onto your target and strike it. So let's practice the kick. Ready, Anna! Um, and the way I'm doing it, for some reason I always do a full spin on one side and only half spin on the other side. Um, so I'm going to keep doing it for now um, on the same side with my left foot each time. Uh, if you want to alternate to get less dizzy, uh, you can. Um, so I'll leave that up to you. Do. Sit. Net. Dasa. Yasa. Yoga. You do. I hope. You. Wait. Alright, so that's on one side. Let's practice with the other side now. So remember to keep up your hands when you're doing this kick. Uh, you don't want to let them down. Um, because once again, after you've done the kick, there's that moment where you're not really in a good spot um, and you're going to need a moment to reset so you want the hands up there uh, to guard after the kick and even during the kick because when you're doing the kick there's that moment where you're not looking at your opponent and if they're fast enough they'll take advantage of that point to throw in a strike so this is called the just in case hand you always have your hand up to block just in case your opponent throws something at you while you're spinning. So let's practice on the other side now. So, ready, Hana! Do! Set! Net! Dasa! Yasa! Yoga! You do! Aho, yo. Right, so that's the kick. Uh, remember, you're kicking with the back of your heel. So each time you kick, you're coming around, kick it like this. But don't forget the hook. So make sure there's a hook in that kick, and it'll be a strong, impressive kick. So uh, before we finish up, let's just practice this with the jump. So once again, I did not practice this kick very much starting out, so I'm not super comfortable with it, but that's what practice is for, uh, to get better and better at our kicks. So uh, let's do the jumping uh, spinning kick now. So we're going to do that, jump and spin, so like this. So I lost my balance a little bit, so make sure you're doing this. Um, on a comfortable uh, place. Otherwise, do it really slow, uh, just to make sure that you don't fall and hurt yourself. Um, but as you're kicking, 
you jump up and when you're in the air you can spin just a little bit faster. So let's practice this kick uh, just a few times. Uh, you can go on your own count or you can follow with me. So Hana! Duel! Se! Ne! Dasa! Hey! And switch. So let's do just a few more. Hana! Duel! I'm just lifting off a little bit off the ground. Set! Net! Dasa! Hey! And Paro! So, Jiret! Kyune! Kyosan! So, uh, that's the lesson. So, uh, if you made it this far, thank you for uh, watching all the way through. Uh, thank you for taking the effort to improve in Taekwondo and keep practicing. I really appreciate it. Uh, so, uh, to uh, keep your work going, uh, during this week, before the next lesson comes out, I'm going to practice shadow boxing, as always. Um, if you have someone at home with you to practice, that's even better. Um, spar with somebody. Uh, if one of your siblings does uh, Taekwondo, um, or maybe you can even uh, help uh, your parents uh, practice with you, uh, teach them a few moves, um, or you can just do it in a mirror, or if you don't have um, a mirror that's the right size for it, or maybe your bathroom is too small, uh, you can just practice in the air. Uh, practice like you're fighting a real person, imagine what they're throwing at you, uh, think of combinations, uh, ways to strike, or ways to block and then strike, block and retaliate. Uh, so once again, be creative with all of your techniques um, and take initiative uh, to work on stuff on your own. So uh, if I would add anything else to that, um, maybe just uh, go through the list of techniques that we worked on that's going to be in the description for this video. Um, do everything five times um, on each side. Uh, or even just two or three times on each side um, just to practice a little bit more, get that extra practice, practice on the side that you need it most, practice on the techniques that you have the most trouble with, um, things like that. So take initiative um, and help yourself become even better at Taekwondo. So, thank you for sticking with me. Cheerio. Turn around fixing a form. Turn back around. Thank you for training.